Okay guys, so today we're going to compare the redemption arcs of three of our favorite characters, Zuko, Sasuke, and Vegeta. Um, we're going to start off with Zuko because he's my personal favorite, but basically we're just going to talk about what we thought of the rede redemption arcs, and then we're going to talk about the differences between each redemption arc and why we liked a certain one the most. That sort of one being Zuko. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, you just want to tell him right away? <laughs> okay. Oh, so, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, yeah, I think we're all on the same page on this one. <laughs> but it's it's really interesting to kind of look at what makes Zuko's redemption arc so much better than the other ones. So, like, what do you guys think about how he started for versus how he ended up? I feel like Zuko throughout the, the show evolved into a completely different character. Um, and that's that's what like distinguishes him the most, in my opinion, compared to like Vegeta or Sasuke. Because like Sasuke, throughout most of, obviously we're gonna talk spoilers, just saying, but Sasuke throughout all of Naruto was basically trying to um, get revenge on Itachi. Of course, until he learned the truth. And then he wanted revenge on all of Konoha, but when you want to say something for Vegeta? Yeah, Vegeta, I mean, it's all about just trying to get his pride. And he still is prideful. And really, his arc was more accepting that Goku is stronger than him. Because for a while, Vegeta was just like, no, I'm stronger, regardless. And he wouldn't admit it. But he finally admit that, you know, Goku's stronger than him. So, and he still struggles that in Super. But we can see that even in Super now, he's he's okay admitting it. And that's basically his redemption arc, is just admitting that, Goku, this cl clown level saying, is actually better than him in fighting. But what I love about with Zuko for me is that it was more believable. Like, for example, that moment in Ba Sing Se where he had the options to join their team or join Azula, he, it made sense for why he joined Azula because at the end of the day, he still values his honor. He still can't really see, like, we could see from Zuko's eyes that he still believes that that's the right way. And it isn't until he gets what he wants that he realizes that, okay, I'm still not happy. I still hate myself. It's still not working out for me. And that's what exactly why I feel why it's unbelievable or better, because we actually see him get what he wants and struggle with it versus characters like Vegeta or Sasuke, which... Uh, technically, Sasuke got what he wanted, but then, like, at the moment uh, he got it, it's like he learned the truth. So it was more like, more like a hidden truth that made a difference in his mindset and even though he learned the truth he still wanted revenge on yeah the, the leaf village which doesn't make too much sense to me i think that that's the fundamental issue with sasuke's redemption arc is that even as soon as he gets what he wants and he discovers the truth we don't necessarily see him grow because he just shifts his focus he still has this vengeful spirit and he still wants revenge he just changes his mind basically on who deserves um that vengeance yeah whereas with zuko when we see him get what he wants we see him struggle with it because he realizes that it's not satisfying him and so that he so we see that we see that struggle in him where he is he's trying to figure out why this thing that he's been working to for you know the entire time we've seen him isn't exactly what he wants. And so I think that what we see in Zuko is that he eventually shifts his goal. His focus, it, it goes from... Wanting to like regain his honor yeah. to doing the right thing by helping the Avatar like um, essentially rebalance the world. And, exactly. and again, it still feels believable because even with Sasuke, at the end when he says, okay, I finally acknowledge you as your friend, we just feel like he had to do that because it's like the story needed to end. But with Zuko, <laughs> you actually do feel like he genuinely does want to help the Avatar. He finally made that realization. It's not just this like, oh, Zuko needs to win at the end, be part of the group. It's no, he actually made his own decision. So, and even with Vegeta, although he's still kind of like acknowledging it, and you could kind of see where Vegeta's point. At the same time, I feel like Vegeta was saying it at the heat of the moment where it's just like, all right. I need a, I can't defeat Boo. Kakarot, you can beat him. Maybe next time I'm going to be the strongest. So it's still like, it's more of a momentary thing where he redeemed Kakarot than an actual like, or permanent or a growth for him. 
One other thing I wanted to mention, though, just to clarify Vegeta's redemption arc, because you're saying that Vegeta's redemption arc is essentially him admitting that Goku is stronger than him. But there's also like other sort of a sim more similar in terms of like them being villains at first and then becoming good guys, right? There's also an, a bit of an arc there as okay. well for Vegeta. Like, for instance, when he's under the control of Frieza and then, you know, once Namek Saga comes around, mm -hmm. he, he starts helping them more off of necessity because there's a greater villain at play. But then later on, he becomes bad again. And the, the whole reason he wants to do that is to get stronger um, than Goku, right? Mm -hmm. That's essentially his reasoning. Um, he, he felt like he got soft again and then he wanted to get stronger. Um, but he found out that that didn't lead to any anything except for him dying. And then that's when he essentially went through more of that humiliation arc, more, mm -hmm. more so in the Buu saga. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, once... Goku was fighting Boo. That's when we had his whole speech of, okay, yeah, you're stronger than me, Go, uh, Kakarot. Yeah. And admitting it. And that was a good moment, for sure, in, in the series. I also forgot with Vegeta's redemption, you can almost say it came earlier when he sacrificed himself to destroy Boo. Because yeah, that yeah. part, he finally hugged Trunks, which he even said, like, I've never hugged you ever since you were born. And then he finally hugged him. And yeah. But again, for, for that part, it's, it's like he was already a good guy. And he went to being a bad guy again. Um, and then essentially the ne next few episodes, he's, he's good again, you know. But, but it's not really about, I guess it wasn't really about bad and good. It was more about power yeah. for him. Um, but it's still, it's still not like a fleshed out arc, in my opinion. Um, it's more, more of a character development for Vegeta. Mm. And I definitely liked it. Um, but in terms of an arc, Zuko's was like throughout the entire series. Mm. And I feel like that made a big difference because like we got to see him change from just being a not really basic villain. But as far as we could tell in the beginning, um, before Blue Spirit stuff happened, he was he was sort of like just that villain that fails all the time. Mm. And then he went from that to becoming like a fugitive in season two and then like running from Azula, essentially. And that gave him so much more character um, to eventually regaining his honor and then at the very end realizing he didn't want it and then helping the Avatar rebalance the world. So it was like, it was an arc, basically, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a full like beginning, middle and end to his, his own personal story that you don't really see in very many other anime characters. 